I always follow the classic one gram of protein per pound of body weight rule. But that's the thing. I was basing it off my total body weight, not factoring in my body fat percentage. And so being bare mode for most of my training years, typically in the 180s, that was the minimum. Whereas nowadays, 9 out of 10 times, it's 120 grams. So there's quite a difference. And what really connected that for me was when I got shredded for the first time. I don't think people realize how much body fat they're carrying until they've hit a single digit status. It puts you in check that you're carrying far more body fat than you realize. We all love to think that our fat free mass index is on the higher end until the definition is popping, the vascularity is there, and you see that you're kind of a lightweight bodybuilder. And that was the case for myself. When I competed, I was 150 pounds, around 7% body fat or so. So logically speaking, if I go by the basic one gram of protein per pound of body weight, that would mean I need 150 grams at the most. But then you have to ask if 7% of my body weight is coming from body fat and extra protein doesn't fuel that, then by default, 150 grams must be wrong. It must be lower, which if you math that out, it'd be around 140 grams. But then if you look at the various meta-analyses that have come out on protein consumption, the general consensus is 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight, a little bit less than what we've been told. And so when you base it off the 150 or the 140, which you'll only know when you get shredded, you end up with 120 grams of protein. And you have to ask, when you're in a bulk state, when your body fat is 20% or more, do those requirements really change? That's what I set out to achieve after I got shredded, which was in 2023. And since then, it's been a good two and a half years, my protein has been on that lower side. Even if you factor in the muscle loss from a dieting phase, a lengthy period of time, if you manage that correctly, you maintain as much muscle as possible, and then you rebuild whatever you lost, which might be at most five pounds of lean tissue, it still doesn't mean you need an extra 50 grams. And so one has to ask, am I really following a low protein diet or am I following an evidence-based protein diet? Ever since you made that switch from going from, let's say an average of 200 grams of protein per day down to an average of 120 grams, what have you noticed in terms of your body composition? I've noticed absolutely nothing. Recovery is exactly the same, progressive overload, is the same as it's been for many years. I can't say that it affected my gains in any kind of way. The only thing that it did allow me to do is optimize my macros so that I can allow for more carbohydrates, which you can argue enhances your work capacity and muscular fullness, especially in a calorie deficit. Having a higher carb diet allows you to retain muscle mass better. By doing that, you can also raise your fiber intake, which ultimately solves the hunger issue as well. And we can even make the case that maybe fiber can be anabolic, <laughs> but uh, there's some gut bacteria that can uh, use the fiber into uh, short chain fatty acids that then aid in muscle protein synthesis. So maybe that's a possible mechanism. Maybe it's the muscle glycogen that you're never depleting yourself. Maybe it's the fact that you can have a lower total calorie count but just have better macros overall and better micronutrients to go with it. Because if the extra protein calories are wasted and that's all you're getting, which might even come in the form of protein powder, and now you can replace that for a whole plant food, something that is more health promoting, well, by default, your meal plan is superior. That's another take on it. But what I could tell you 100%, and I know because I've been documenting all my training since 2020, I have SD cards filled to the max, is that my gains have not been affected whatsoever. And if it did, I would have noticed it immediately. And I've played it up and down. I've tried up to 220 grams, including being a single digit body fat. Comparing that to 120, which is 100 grams less, I'm just as strong as I've ever been. Four or five bench at 181, five and a half plate dip, 210 pound weighted pull up. The proof is in the pudding. I'm not seeing any recovery problems. That's why I've continued to do it. And I, I truly believe that it has to do with the fact that I've identified how much muscle mass I'm actually carrying. Once you get shredded, you know the truth. And until that point, everyone who is 200 pounds plus at above 20% body fat, I can almost guarantee that they're consuming too much protein. It's not hurting their gains necessarily, but it's not benefiting them either, is what I would argue. What about going the other way? Have you noticed the benefits of higher carbs during like your bulking phases? In general, your carbs are probably going to be higher when you're bulking just because the caloric intake can be 
quite up there. If I'm on the leaner side, I'll be consuming somewhere in the lower 2000s, whereas if I'm bulking, it's upper 3000s, sometimes even 4000 calories. And through that, you can end up getting 600 grams of carbs a day. I know that might sound insane, but it's true if you math it out. And therefore, you're just filled out to the max, not to mention the additional bloat factor from being a higher body fat with the enhanced leverages. So there's definitely something there. Even that, the more calories you consume, the higher your protein will be automatically. Even if you're primarily getting it through whole plant foods, like for example, everyone thinks of beans as a protein source, but they're also quite high in carbs. So if you're eating more beans, both your carbs and your protein will go up at the same time, but you're not necessarily going to have a super high protein intake. It's just that your calories are so much higher that your macros kind of balance out in that way, if that makes sense. If anything, people would think that, okay, this guy's going 100 grams protein less, plus he's getting it in from plant-based sources. Common perception would be like, okay, this guy's just going to shrivel up. Now, when I first transitioned into this, of course, I was still consuming animal products, and it was the same amount of grams. And since then, there have been some meta-analyses comparing vegans, omnivores, and when you do it correctly, there appears to be no significant differences. So I can at least attest to that part. It's the same. I'm going two years strong eating this way, and my physique has continued to improve the entire time. Soy protein is quite anabolic. It can actually mimic animal protein in many ways. And that's what people don't realize too, is that when your protein intake is high enough, you're still raising IGF-1. Not that this would improve muscle gains in any kind of way, but just points to the fact that Plants contain all the essential amino acids that you need. And when you're consuming a whole food diet, which blends in everything, and especially if you're a bodybuilder, you're probably getting an excess amount of protein, especially if there's going to be a block of tofu mixed into the equation, or if you're going to throw in two scoops of uh, pea protein powder or something, which even that you don't need. And that was another realization that the days where I would go without the protein powder, it wouldn't affect my recovery. So you do one day on, one day off, and the next thing you know, you're skipping multiple days. And then you're going from having four scoops to two scoops, and then it becomes one scoop. And then it's, how much more can I reduce this thing and still get away with it? What I found in my case is that when I went to around 90 grams or so of protein, that's where I could see somewhat of a difference. But at 120, nothing. And 150 did not provide additional benefits over 120. And if I did get 150, it's simply because I was in the bulking phase and my calories were so high that you're inevitably going to end up there anyway. So either way, it's not something to worry about whether you're leaner or heavier. It just balances out. How important do you think your protein intake has been for getting you to where you are at today? If you found that protein intake isn't a huge variable when it comes to your gains, what are the few things that you would say are? Sure. When I first started lifting, my intake was a lot higher than what it is now. One can make the same case for my volume. But it doesn't mean that it was the best way. It was I was probably getting too much just for the sake of being safe. But the way I look at it is, if you're able to make the same gains as an elite lifter, so you're seasoned and you don't see any recovery issues in your tendons, your ligaments, even muscularly, if you can get away with it when you're that strong, then surely you didn't need that much protein when you were a novice lifter. So that's how I rationalize it. I'm not lifting beginner loads here. I'm pushing myself to the absolute max, training very hard with no injuries either. So that's also proof. I mean, it says something as well. But what I'm saying is just because you did something as a beginner doesn't mean that you still have to do that as an advanced lifter. And so I don't think that having higher protein when I was younger was the game changer. Had I eaten the same way that I do now and actually optimized my programming instead, that's what would have made the difference. And I think everyone's focusing on all the wrong things. Instead of asking, where do you get your protein? You should be asking, where do you get your fiber? How much micronutrients are you getting? What is the best caloric bang for your buck in general? Once you've hit your basic requirements, focus on other things. I truly believe that programming is the missing link. So that's what I could have worked on. I just feel like people need to focus more on their health instead of just one sole macronutrient, protein. Like, that's not why the masses are stuck in a novice phase. And even if you're consuming protein powders, you might be making no gains at all just because you don't know what you're doing in the gym. 
So you need to solve that first and then focus on the quality of your overall diet. Whole unprocessed foods, getting a variety of micronutrients. You know, a lot of guys, they, they follow, their macros look perfect on paper. But then you look at the vitamins and minerals and they're actually below the RDA or they're barely making it or they do hit it, but they could have had less calories with more nutrition is what I'm saying. And then looking at the studies that were coming out simultaneously, they all kept saying the same thing around 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight. The vast majority of these studies were showing that. Now there's a few minority that will say 1.3 to 1.5, but that is not the general consensus. And I've tried that too, and I didn't see any difference. So I think I'm gonna go with what most of the research says, give it an honest shot, truly. And on top of that, doing it on hard mode and seeing if it works out. That's been surprising to me too, because now I'm, I'm saving money and I don't have to stress about it as much. So it's quite shocking. The gains have been just as optimal. So it was my curiosity with how things played out after my competition and then just looking at the emerging data. And I think it's continued to show that position. Totally agree, man.